Hey guys, what's up? So, in my previous video, you saw me uh, getting this thing pre-wired for uh, <clears throat> a BL Touch. So I got this on Amazon. It was like 50 bucks with the cable, the extra extended cable. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to get this going. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I've been doing the. Uh, I made this a fixed bed, so I definitely need to have auto leveling bed. So um, one of the things I have to do is originally I was going to do a capacitive. I'm still going to do a capacitive. I, I have it. It's coming in the mail, but I guess I want to experiment between the two. But for now, I want to get the BL Touch going. So I'm going to get that wired into my board. And but I have to change my uh, carriage here to a BL Touch carriage. So these are pretty much identical, except this is designed for BL Touch, and that's designed obviously for a capacitive or inductive sensor. Um, so, <clears throat> get that going, I'll get that going first, and then I'll take this board apart, and I'll get, show you how to wire it into the right spots on the board. But, uh, alright, so I'll get this going, and I'll be back. Alright, so it's time to install this thing right here. I don't care with this one hand, but uh, I'm going to get this mounted into the, uh, <clears throat> the spot right here. And then, uh, I have to get rid of the Z-switch, too. I guess I could keep it, but... Yeah, but I mean, I'll probably have them keeping it and I'll just move this up like this. It's like a in case I ever want to reactivate it. So I'm going to keep the wiring in place <coughs> in case this thing ever fails, but um, I don't actually, I, don't have a, I wouldn't have an adjustable bed anymore, but I could still use this to, to adjust if I wanted to. So, <clears throat> alright guys, um, get it going. Oh, this thing's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. For some reason in the pictures it seems like it's bigger. Even in the videos I watch, the other ones on YouTube. So it seems like it'd be a, it's, it's bigger. So, all right, not ran too much. Let's go. All right. So I need some, I guess, M3 screws. Looks like. All right, guys. There it is. So yeah, this video is gonna be more of like the hardware part of it, uh, the wiring internally for the box. I'm probably not gonna do a firmware video because there's lots of on those on YouTube already. So, um, okay. So now I need to adjust this. They said 8.3 millimeter from the bottom to here. So I'm gonna get my calipers here. My see if I can get that going. All right. So I got to make that thing 8.3 millimeters away from the uh, tip. If you look at their manual, it says that. So this is pretty close. My uh, this like a little big pin right here. So I'm gonna use this as like a like a guide to get it in spot. They say it can be plus or minus uh, 0.2 millimeter. All right, guys. So I just realized that that little the tip, the hot end tip right there, is actually about eight millimeters. It's very close to it. So I'm gonna try to make it parallel with that. The, the tip of this part right here, if you can see that, right there, needs to be 8.3 millimeter, 8.3 millimeters away from that tip right there. So I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. And the main thing is when you bring it down, is this thing should never be touching the the plate. Like it should never come down and jam this tip in there. So the, the tip should always hit the, the plate, the bed, before this thing does. Even while it's retracted, so. Or, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, because if it's, it's already retracted and it comes down, it's going to jam that thing up into the electronics. Alright. So I'm going to just bring that up a little bit. Let's see. Maybe about a millimeter or so, and then I think we're good. Cool. All right, guys. So I'm pretty. I think I'm right on there. So right now it's not. It's higher than the tip. And if I pull this down, then it's lower than the tip. So awesome. I think we're good. We're good here. All right, guys. <clears throat> have the control box up in here, and I have the wires routed back this way. And I'm actually going to cut them to this length right here and solder them onto a connector similar to this. I got this over at Marvac. It's a electronics place here in Costa Mesa. And I'm going to permanently put this in there so I, I can... Uh, I want to be able to remove the control box completely if I have to from the from the unit here. So... Um, I'm going to cut those that length. And then I'm going to... I guess I got the too long of a length here. <laughs> what did I get? Like two meter? I don't know. Too much. Honestly. Um, I'm going to solder them to the board. And then I got to rewire it back in here internally. 
it's kind of weird the way this one's set up. You get the wired into the uh, pin 27 on, the, on this board, one of the connectors. So I have to flip that around. I'm going to solder something in. I'll show you that when I get to it. And then the Z motor stop, which is, I believe, in here somewhere. The Z right here. So I'm going to keep that cable there in case I ever want to hook this Z stop up again. So I'm going to keep the Z stop in place. So. Or actually, I might have as a well. I guess I could wire it, wire it in as a backup if I want to do. But all right, we'll get that going. So first, cut the wires. Awesome. All right, guys, definitely not the best soldering job. <clears throat> so the two center, two the the black and the brown are are ground. So I have that in the center pin, and then I have the uh, five volt in the sensors. Uh, the yellow is the uh, goes to pin twenty seven. And I can't remember what the white is, but I'll find out. Um, but I'm going to mark the numbers down, and that way I'm going to just come back here and sound on the board and bring them down. All right. All right, guys, there it is. You can hardly tell. This is the factory one, and that's the one I put on there. <clears throat> and it rolls back up, zip tied along with the other extruder. Not the extruder, I mean the hot end. And uh, yeah, I guess my printer bot has the extruder on top, so I'm always thinking the extruder there but um, all right cool next step is to get that wine down into the board all right so I got this little thing connected this little three pin connector I'm actually looking at it right now on this diagram on the computer right there and <clears throat> it's not exactly in the pin arrangement that I want so I'm going to take out these pins and uh, rearrange it so it actually matches that <clears throat> Looks like it's actually reversed from that uh, the diagram there. <clears throat> if you guys can see that, I need to make that reversed. All right, awesome. All right, guys. So here's the tricky part: pin 27. I got to put an orange cable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to color code everything, and keep it the same. But I got to put pin 27 up to uh, pin two on my connector up here. So get that going and. I'm actually going to make it so it's actually uh, <clears throat> not permanent, so I can separate it if I want to. But, uh... Alright, cool. Awesome. Alright, I got a solder through the hot glue on there. Both sides. <clears throat> so this is what I was talking about, a disconnection. So in case I ever wanted to remove this BL touch, I could just pull this off. <clears throat> like, when I want to uh, test capacitive sensing, because um, I'm going to compare them both and see which one's better. I want to be able to remove this. So, and what I'll end up doing is probably just getting a different connector and soldering for the, for the capacitive, like a whole different. So I can just easily remove it off the motherboard. So, all right, cool. All right, ready for our first fire up here. So, the power button. Hand fingers on the power button. Uh, I don't know if I can get a good angle on this thing here. Let's see. Ready, set, go. Okay. If it was flashing, I think it has an error. I don't know, maybe the firmware. But um, hardware wise, I think it's fine. It's supposed to do a self test. Okay. All right, so I gotta do the firmware now, but I'm not gonna do a video on that. There's another video on the YouTube that's guy goes in pretty depth with it. So the main thing is that there wasn't a lot of good wire, videos on the wiring. So all right, guys, cool. So uh, if I get it working, I'll come back and uh, get the, the firmware working. I'll get it going. Do a test print. All right. All right, guys. I thought I'd show you something interesting. Uh, all the instructions are actually kind of I think are wrong for the. Uh, the A nets, uh, the wiring instructions for the BL touch. So let me show you this real quick. Let me uh, spin this real quick. So I'm spinning this. Now look at that light. See that light right there on the BL touch. As I spin it, see it's flashing again. So as I'm doing that, right? I don't know if you can get them both in the frame. It's it's actually spinning with the LCD. So I think pin 27. They don't use pin 27 anymore. I think pin, they use pin 29 now. 
So it was the this is a newer LCD compared to the old Anet A8. So look at that. So I gotta take this thing back apart and resolder it back to pin 29. That's not a lot of information about that on the internet, but yeah, this is actually an e, e, uh, E10, E12 are on the same board. So they look like they're identical boards. I don't know if it's just the, the LCD is different or what they look, but uh, I think it's part. I guys have this thing working finally. So actually, I had to build a custom configuration file because I had to take bits, bits and pieces from different things. And it's <coughs> some guys had it right, like the old Agnet A8s, you know, pin 27. It's actually on pin 27, not 29 now. And <coughs> let me show this real quick. Go down to control, BL touch, and let's do a self test. So, <clears throat> cool, it's responding. So yeah, pin 29, that's that's the trick. But then also the configuration age files was all jacked up on the different source I got. So <clears throat> I'll put this on Thinkiverse and uh, the configuration I used and how I got this to work. So, but uh, all right, awesome. All right, guys, got a bed level in there. So I couldn't go all the way because like this will get jammed in there, so I can't go all the way right. So. Pretty awesome. Huh. It does take a while, though, to go on if I do this between every single print. So every time I mess up a print, I hit G29. This adds like an extra minute to the print. Alright. I mean, I guess I could just do like three points. I like, kind of like the way the printer bot does it. But, uh, alright, cool. Alright, put the firmware uh, reconfiguration H file. I think it works. Alright.